Yeah, yeah, you know, a little three piece. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. How are you feeling? You know, we're getting fucking married, so I feel good. Oh my gosh, honey. Yeah, you like it? I do. Yeah. What is, what's, ooh. Oh, God, I'm just so happy I can actually finally see you again. Yeah, have you been okay? No. <laughs> just the two of us Building castles in the sky Just the two of us You and I we look for love, no time for tears. Wasted water's all that is, and it don't make no flowers grow. Good things might come to those who wait, but not for those who wait too late. We gotta go for all we know. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. What? <laughs> 
when I was a little girl, <laughs> I dreamed of Indiana Jones swooping into my life to take me on an adventure, or that my Hogwarts letter would arrive any day to begin my whirlwind Slytherin romance. Or mostly that Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer would find me and take me as his eternal bride. Mm. Deep in my heart, I knew that the chances of any of those things happening were low. So I gave up on the idea of a love that perfect altogether. But after seven years with you, I've realized that our relationship is so much more incredible than any of my childhood fantasies. Maybe because our relationship is actually real. Or maybe <laughs> because you are the kindest, funniest, most intelligent, and beautiful person I've ever met. Before we met, I would have never believed <laughs> there was someone out there as perfect for me as you are. You are my every dream come true, and I am so deeply, madly, stupidly, endlessly in love with you, and I can't wait for the reality that we get to continue building together. Thank you for being an incredible dad to our cats. <laughs> Thank you for learning all the words to my favorite musicals and for letting me drag you to Disneyland over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Thank you for finding me, for loving me, for being my comfort, my safety, my cheerleader, and my best friend. I vow to always ride the water rides with you at Disneyland, Holding you, do it. even if I've just straightened my hair. <laughs> I vow to always take over for small talk when we meet new people so you don't have to. <laughs> Thank you. I vow to root for the New York Jets. <laughs> and to tell anyone who dares feel pity for us that this year is our year. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> and this year is our year. <laughs> I vow to always support you as you follow your dreams. I vow to make sure you always feel safe, loved, and appreciated. I've called you many things in life. Dolphin, grandma, papa pizza, sweet cheese. But I'm glad to finally get to call you my husband. You are the piece of me I never knew was missing. But now that we're together, I'll never be complete without you again. The idea of doing any one thing for the rest of our lives should seem really daunting. but. Even when we're sitting together on our final days, I know I'm going to still want to go to Disneyland with you one more time. A lifetime together won't be enough, but it will have to do. So I can say it a million times, and it still will never feel like I've said it enough. I love you. <laughs> Take it away. Okay. My turn, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, two pages. It's, it's a little, little long, too. Rachel, <laughs> or as you have also been known during the course of our relationship, Ratchet, Dolphin, Potato, Shelly Bean, Sweet Cheese, or as you are simply put into my phone, the girl with the nice butt. Oh my God. <laughs> I've never had to make a vow up to this point in my life. So upon doing it for the first time, I thought it would be wise to consult with one of the most learned scholars on the matter. Webster's Dictionary <laughs> defines vow as see promise, so that didn't help. <laughs> Culturally, vows are most often described as solemn and are understood to be sacrifices. There are vows of silence, poverty, chastity, none of which I'm interested in. <laughs> but if we take a closer look at one, say the vow of silence, when you, take, when you make that vow, it's not as if you instantly lose the ability to speak. While that might make the initial sacrifice pretty significant, it would make maintaining the vow very easy. No, the person who takes a vow of silence has the opportunity to speak every day, from the moment they wake until they sleep, but they choose not to. Every day, every hour, every minute, they hold their tongue. So ultimately, at its core, a vow is a choice. Every, it's choosing the same thing, or in this case, the same person, every minute of every hour of every day, evermore. So with that in mind, here are my vows to you. I vow to always get you the biggest glass of water I can find, unless that they're cat on me, in which case you're on your own. <laughs> I vow to give the gluten-free option a try, <laughs> and to lie to you when you ask if I could taste the difference. <laughs> I vow to put you in a movie of mine one day, oh, 
as a featured extra. <laughs> I vow to hold you in our bed <sighs> when you're anxious, to dance with you under the stars when you're happy, to be patient and understanding when you're angry, and to kiss you softly and secretly when your love swells and the world around us falls away. Rachel, you, you are the ground beneath my feet and the air that I breathe, the blood that pumps in my veins and the dreams that play in my mind. I could never in a hundred lifetimes have enough of you. And so most of all, I vow to cherish this one that I'm blessed to have now. I told you already when I proposed, but it bears repeating. I love you not just because you're good for me, but because you're good to me. F. Scott Fitzgerald <laughs> wrote, first one gives off his best picture, the bright and finished product mended with bluff and falsehood and humor. Then more details are required and one paints a second portrait and a third. Before long, the best lines cancel out and the secret is exposed at last. The pains of the pictures have intermingled and given us away. You have by now seen through all of my best attempts at self-portraiture. All of my blemishes and mistakes have been laid bare to you. And still I find you standing here in front of me, ready and willing to take me with all my warts as your partner for life. And so I find myself to be as lucky a man as there ever was to have the love of a good woman who knows me better than anyone ever has. As I come to the end of my vows, I find myself highly cognizant of that word, and, sorry, in philosophy, oh my God. Aristotle used the ancient Greek word for end, telos, to describe the ultimate intrinsic reason for something's existence. But it wasn't so much about destiny as cause. It is that for which sake anything is done. It is really both beginning and end. Rachel, you are my telos my reason for being, and the beginning and end of all that I say and do. And at the end of it all, at the end of our times, I choose to be there with you. <laughs> hey, that's done. Yep. <laughs> for thousands of years, lovers have exchanged rings as a token of their vows. Though, though small in size, these rings are very large in significance. They remind us that love is not cheap, love is not common. Let these rings be a sign that love has a past, a present, and a future, through you and within you. As you wear these rings, whether together or apart for a moment, may they be a constant reminder of the commitment you're making here today. So Mario, please take Rachel's ring and place it on her finger. <laughs> if you can get it on. Yep. You can do it. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> Rachel. Rachel. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign that I choose you. As a sign that I choose you. To be my lover. To be my lover. My partner. My partner. And my best friend. And my best friend. To the end of my days. To the end of my days. Wear it. Wear it. Think of me. Think of me. And know that I love you. And know that I love you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Rachel, please take Mario's ring and place it on his finger and as well repeat after me. Mario. Mario. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign that I choose you. As a sign that I choose you. To be my lover. Be my lover. My partner. My partner. And my best friend. And my best friend. To the end of my days. To the end of my days. Wear it. Wear it. Think of me. Think of me. And know that I love you. And know that I love you. As the officiant of this marriage ceremony, it is gr with great pleasure that I announce to you all <laughs> that Mario and Rachel publicly introduce themselves to you for the first time as husband and wife. Mario, with Rachel's permission. <laughs> You may kiss the bride. <laughs>
as husband and wife. And uh, for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Regina, and I am the mother of the bride. <laughs> uh, Alan and I would like to thank all of you for joining us at this joyous occasion. Uh, I realize that the majority of you have uh, traveled from far and wide, and Alan and I are pleased and grateful that you were uh, able to attend. Uh, first, to Debbie and Steve. Alan and I are excited to meet and join your extended family and uh, have you meet and join ours. We are looking forward to spending time with you during the many special milestones that Mario and Rachel will travel through on their long, happy road of marriage. To Mario. <laughs> Welcome to our family. Congratulations on surviving Alan's stringent vetting process. <laughs> You deserve a commendation as well as our daughter's hand for outlasting his constant poking and prodding. <laughs> However, more importantly, you make our daughter very happy. And as most of you know, despite the uh, unsolicited advice of many of my friends and neighbors, she is our only child. <laughs> so whether you like it or not, Mario, you have gained not only a wife, but also a pair of adoring in-laws. 
And finally, to my perfect daughter. <laughs> Where did the time go? Did you know that I was once actually stopped by Goldie Hawn? And when she told me what a beautiful baby I had. No lie, no lie. Uh, many people used to compare you to the Gerber baby. I think it was those big, beautiful blue eyes. And it seems just like yesterday, I was coaxing Felipe out of your hair for the day. <laughs> that was the rat that lived in her hair. Uh, and I bet I could still drive to your dance classes with my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, down Brinch Street, past the Cadillac Motel, a room for a night or a room for a lifetime. <laughs> The wicked soundtrack playing on repeat for the hundredth time. And uh, how many gallons of sunscreen and bug spray do you think I slathered on you before I dropped you off at your annual Audubon camps? <laughs> it didn't really matter. You got eaten alive anyway, right? And finally, has it already been 11 years since Daddy and I brought you to New Orleans? You were so brave, and leaving you was so hard. But you did achieve your dream of attending a Southern University and joining a sorority. A sorority of sisters that couldn't be closer to you than the real thing, as evidenced by your beautiful bridesmaids here today. And now here you sit, the beautiful, intelligent, kind, and organized. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Woman that you are today. And Daddy and I could not be more proud of you. So now, if everyone would join me in a toast to the happy couple, may you have a long and joyous marriage full of love, respect, and happiness. To Mario and Rachel. Here, here, the mother of the bride, everybody. Thank you, Regina. everyone. <laughs> My name is Sarah. For those of you who don't know me, I am Rachel's oldest friend and um, non-biological sister. <laughs> 28 years ago, I was lucky enough to meet Rachel at my fourth birthday party. We had just moved in next door to each other, so naturally, at the age of four, we didn't have too many friends, so we invite everyone in the neighborhood to fill the empty seats. After a few years of first forced birthday parties and playdates, we finally perfected our social skills, and we became best friends. And I'm talking inseparable. Rachel was the little sister I never had, very much so that one afternoon, Rachel and I drafted up fake adoption papers. <laughs> we used our best permanent markers. We were so excited. Unfortunately, Regina shot me down. <laughs> She sent me packing home. <laughs> Since Rachel was an only child, and I was a few years older than her, I sort of took on that older big sister role. I truly excelled at it. <laughs> Bossing her around, deciding which games we were going to play, picking out the movies we watched. You get it. <laughs> As the years went on and we grew into our own, we started having um, separate friend groups in high school, then graduating, going off to college. But no matter what, every time we came back home, it was like coming home to family. As each year passed, I watched Rachel grow into this incredible human being we are celebrating today. Everything she does, she truly puts her heart and soul into it, and it's honestly inspiring to watch. This brings me to Mario. <laughs> I remember meeting Mario for the first time. Rachel was still at work, so she suggested that we go to lunch together. So Mario took me to lunch, and it was basically like a blind date. <laughs> Very awkward. <laughs> but after speaking with him for an hour, I knew instantly he was the one. It's honestly scary how similar they are. <laughs> In all the years I have known Rachel, I've never seen her happier. She is truly and completely utter utterly herself with Mario. And it's all I could ever ask for. Rachel and Mario, 
You have shown me what true love really means. Being able to witness your love has been magical. With that, I will leave you with one last thing. The best use of life is love. The best expression of love is time. The best time to love is now. Rachel and Mario, this is your time. May the next chapter bring nothing but happiness and love. Oh, and some babies I can spoil. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to Rachel and Mario. <laughs> well done, Sarah. Thank you so much. And now we're going to pass the mic off to our best man, Pat. Pat, get on up here, sir. Lovely ladies and kind gentlemen. It's a pleasure to introduce myself and say a few words about my best friend, Mario Mastro Marino. My name is Pat Sue, and I am the best man. And I've had the pleasure of knowing Mario for two decades. I met Mario during freshman orientation at Regis High School. The students were gathered in a gym playing basketball in small groups, and as luck would have it, Mario and I were placed in the same group. After some brief exchanges, it quickly became clear to me that there was no way I was going to like this kid. <laughs> he was from Staten Island. He had a ridiculous accent. He had on these really dorky glasses. And he was kicking my ass in basketball. None of it made sense. Naturally, the universe has a funny way of realigning itself. And over the course of the next four years, Mario and I would cross paths over and over and over again. Through homerooms, Latin class, speech and debate, musical theater productions, and many more. Eventually, we became friends. And our shenanigans left the confines of 84th and Park Avenue and expanded out into the big world. From many of the infamous Mario parties in Staten Island, to crashing random New Year's Eve parties, to breaking hearts and wallets in Atlantic City, it's been a pleasure to have Mario at my side as my closest friend all these years. When Mario told me that he was getting married, there was not a moment of doubt in my mind that this was a journey that he was well equipped for. Throughout the 18 years that I've known him, one particular quality of his has consistently shown bright. Mario is above all other things, a man for others. Through good times, he is always there to support, laugh with, and encourage his loved ones. Through difficult times, he's equally present, ready to fight for his friends and what he believes in, lend a shoulder to cry on, or simply to just listen. On a personal level, Mario has always been there for me, a source of support, empathy, and kindness. Though I am an only child, I never felt lacking in the sibling department, not since I started at Regis, because I found a brother in Mario. While nothing in this life is certain, I am confident that Mario's admirable qualities as a man for others will be a catalyst for continued growth and a source of inspiration and strength in this union for many years to come. And certainly, a man like this deserves all the happiness in the world. Now, I do wish I've had more opportunities to spend quality time with a couple. Naturally, being on the other side of the country presents challenges in that regard. However, based on the encounters and experiences that I do have, I can say that the two of you are, in a word, beautiful. Rachel, five years ago, you reached out by email to a whole roster of Mario's closest friends, many of whom were not local and many of whom I'm pretty sure you haven't met before because you wanted to make his 27th birthday special. You had us all submit a little video expressing our gratitude and appreciation for the man of the hour so that even though we were all physically apart, we were still with him in spirit. This has always resonated with me, and Rachel, know this. Mario's best friends are now your best friends and we are ready to support the both of you, regardless of how far away physically we may be. Mario, we've had many conversations about friends, family, life, the future, and your love for this woman. I thought about which story to pull from that treasure trove, and I decided to go with something short, simple and sweet, but powerful. We were nearing the end of your bachelor party in Denver, Colorado, 
A few of us were sitting around a dining room table with a Call of Duty's background music. <laughs> I'm prompted. You looked up at all of us and you said the following. Despite all the fun I've had this weekend, I miss Rachel. And I cannot wait to be with her. Enough said. So with that, please join me in raising a glass to the happy couple. May you continue to bring each other happiness, inspiration, and support. To Rachel and Mario, cheers. All right, well done, our best man, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a nice round of applause, huh? And ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we are going to have a few words from our bride and groom. We know everybody here. Most of them, yeah. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of weddings where we don't know anybody, so no. this is exciting. Yeah. Um, we just, we didn't have anything prepared. Nope. But um, <laughs> we just wanted to say from the bottom of our hearts, I know that so many of you, all of you almost, came from out of state and oh, far away, and we are so thankful that you guys are here. We love each other so much, and we've been looking forward to this day for a year and a half, and the fact that it's here is a little bit surreal, but um, I hope you guys have the best time, Woo! and I hope I get to say hello to every single one of you, and if I don't, I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> hey, Charles. Hey. <laughs> one down. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, like, uh, yeah, that's, what do you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> I second. Uh, I will, I will, I guess I will say, um, there is an old, I don't even know who wrote it, but there is some old saying that <laughs> every man is an island unto himself. And I think tonight is just clear evidence that that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> That's it. Yeah,
Everybody 